Hello there, it's David here, and this is another lecture, my amazing series. And this one is about the job interview. How to get yourself hired. Normal people like myself, and perhaps yourself, that is you, we fear job interviews. And just like you fear a driving test. The reason for this fear is that it seems like your whole life depends on whether you get the job or not. Or in a driving test, pass your test. And in your mind, it becomes all or nothing. And uh, this is what causes people to not present themselves very well in these situations sometimes because their the stakes are so high. Your whole life, your future, what you think about yourself and what other people think about you, what your children may think about you, what your spouse may think about you, it's all there on the line. So therefore, you can the tension can build up and so this is about how to get yourself hired in a job interview and I might even give you some concrete examples of this where I've gone for an interview myself and there's been a panel of experts, civil servants scientists or academic people and qualified interviewers and they have they outnumber you there's one of you and a few of them and this can be intimidating in itself and in particular, if the job is a prestigious one, or prestigious one, then we um, we desire this position. You know, pres prestigious jobs with good pay and prospects are well sought after. So it's not as if you're not you're going to be. Without competition here, there's a lots of people who would love to get this job. And uh, so how do you make sure <laughs> it is you that gets the job? I'm now going to reveal the secrets. And I've applied these myself, and they work. So I've got proof. So we're not talking about a job which uh, is a horrible one and it doesn't pay very well and um, you know they'll hire people because they need someone to do a menial kind of job and although these have great value particularly when you don't have any job at all but I'm I'm looking at more like how do you get yourself a good job? You know, one with you can be proud of and it, it gives you respect and the company respects you and see you as of high value and they'll pay you and give you great conditions. So these are things that we want. Everybody wants that type of thing, or most people anyway. So, what does a person think if they're turning up for a job interview? Well, they think it wouldn't be great to get this job. It will solve all my problems, I'll get good money, and for once in my life things will go well, and I can save up some money, buy a car, get a mortgage and 
and uh, I can tell people I'm working for this company and people, ooh, that's really good and you'll get a lot of respect and this is what people are after and so we're starting to get the idea whoa the stakes are pretty high here and I've got to be better than everyone else and you think I wonder how many other people are looking to get this position and why would they hire me and this is where you need to adjust your thinking because when someone goes for one of these really good jobs they're th perhaps thinking about themselves and how great it would be to get this job the money's good and it's the type of job they want to do it's the type of company they want to work for and and they can boast to their friends they got the job and perhaps you think to yourself I need this job I really need it it's so important to me I need this job and what you're doing here is raising the tension, the pressure, raising the stakes and this could be where you might not get what you want or need and there'll be a reason for that so you turn up for the interview and there's a bunch of people at the other side of the desk and they're looking at you and gauging you and you know the first few seconds count you're going to be self-conscious you're going to be possibly very nervous and you want to make a, a good impression as they say you never get a second chance to make a first impression so you kind of think if I behave myself and they'll be putting questions to me I'll just answer them and not say very much more and hopefully they'll see me as a decent person trustworthy, reliable and then I'll get a job and then I'll get all the benefits of course a lot of people want that job as well so why are you going why are they going to hire you? What makes you different? Everybody's pretty much got the same qualifications. Perhaps similar or appropriate backgrounds. And what's going to make you stand out? So one of the things people may be prone to in a job interview is trying too hard being too compliant too agreeable too keen too eager whatever they say you agree to whatever they ask you say yeah I'll do this I'll do that But think about it from the interviewer's point of view and once you start to see it from their point of view this is the key to it. If you're thinking they must hire me because they know I need this job so they should do the decent thing and hire me because it's very important and they must realise how important this job is to me. However, 
what you have to do is turn this around. Now, if someone tries very hard and they're very keen, you can also be very nervous and twitchy. They're scared about making a mistake, a slip up, saying the wrong thing. And they may well do that because they're on edge. The interviewers will pick this up and go, hmm, this will make them a bit uncomfortable. Because the interviewers are trying to solve their problem, not your problem. They're trying to get this sorted. In their judgment, time, salaries, all at stake, they've got to get this solved. So what you do is present yourself as someone who's going to solve their problems. And if you can do that, then they'll be keen to listen to what you've got to say because their problem is hiring the right person. And you become a problem solver. You become the person who takes on with confidence what they're going to say. So you be more nonchalant. Yes, this is how I can help you. I've done the study and I've read the notes. I've got the experience. What I'd like to do is now apply this with a company which is like yours, a prestigious one. That's what I'm looking for. Confident talk. You'll be you'll be starting to lean forward and say, yeah, what do you have to offer us? So the idea is someone goes into the job interview hoping for a break, piece of luck, or goodwill, or just common decency and they'll hire me. No. What people hire the person that solves their problem. And they may well think, oh, this person could really do with this job, but they won't hire you for that reason, because that's going to put a burden on them of obligation. So trying too hard is something where you perceive a resistance. So you work harder to try and overcome a force which is against you. The force of other people wanting a job and all this type of thing. But now you like turn us around. Consider as you go into the interview room that you will be hired. And the people at the other side of the desk are there to help you and they want to hire you. They want to give you the job. And there's only one reason why. Why they won't give you the job. And that is if you talk yourself out of it. If you start to talk yourself out of it, they'll think, mm, no, no. Everything was looking fine, but I don't like the sound of that. So you don't talk yourself out of it. You talk yourself into it and assume you're going to be hired. You take the position that the stance that there's no particular reason why they shouldn't hire you and it's really the, the best thing for them to do. They'll the interviews will pick up on this confidence and it will make them comfortable. If you make them feel as nervous as you, no chance of getting hired. This is how I get hired for a government agency in a prestigious job. 400 people applied for this job and there was a lot of conditions and qualifications required and all this type of thing. 
and only 100 people got a return envelope, which was a big fat envelope full of all sorts of information and forms and things. So 400 people applied to the advertised job in the press. 100 people got the big pack full of all the information. I filled it all in very carefully. And then it came to interview time and they took in 20 people to be interviewed. And so out of 400, initially it's gone down to 20. And they came up from London to do the interviews at a hotel in near Perth. And they interviewed 10 people one day and 10 people the next day for one job. And I realised that I was perhaps the last person in because I was on the second day and I was due to go in, I think, round about 4 o'clock and 4 p.m. And I thought, well, that's going a bit late. So I looked at, I walked into this hotel and I had a quick look at the register while no one was, no one was uh, aware. And I noticed nine people before me. And I thought, oh dear, nine people have already been interviewed. And yesterday, ten people were interviewed. And I'm the last person. What chance do I stand here of getting hired to be the one in 400? And I did actually get hired and I got a phone call at seven minutes past eight in the morning the very next day offering me the position and plane tickets and a training set up and a driver come and pick me up for the plane and at the other end to take me to a hotel. So I can explain how I managed to do that. 